In this next set of videos, we'll code a number of string functions together. This video focuses on string length. You're probably spoiled by all the conveniences provided by object-oriented languages, especially related to strings. C does provide low-level access to the data for efficiency, but if we need to work with strings often, we'll want to write some of our own string functions. We could even go so far as to create a smarter string struct that remembered its own length. But to make it really useful, we'd need to use a concept called dynamic memory allocation, and that's beyond our scope right now. Let's work on some string functions together. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or CSSE 221, check out string functions from your Subversion repository so we can start the assignment together. If you aren't enrolled in the course, you can still download the zip file containing the files. Let's go to Eclipse. In Eclipse, I've opened up the string functions project and the string functions file within that. Start off here by changing it to my name. You can go ahead and do the same thing for yourself as the author. If I quick scan through the file, I see that I have a number of prototypes for functions, all right, just stubs right now, with documentation for each one. And down in main, I have a place where I'm going to be writing some tests. So let's look at string length first. thing to notice here is that, is that we are calculating the length of the string. And we can't use strlen. Of course, that would be cheating because that's what we're doing right here. So let's go ahead and write some tests. Always a good idea to write your tests first to help you define what you're looking for in the problem. So I'm going to start off by defining a string. So I'll just call it S1 and start with something simple. Just call it hello. And then I want to print out the output of my string length function to make sure that it works. So the length of my string, I'll put it in brackets just so that I, I would know if there were any spaces at the beginning or end of the word is percent %d, and in this case, I'll write should be 5 for hello, H-E-L-L-O, no null character. And I will pass into it S1 for the string, and then string length of S1, which of course returns that integer, get plugged in in the format string there. And if I run this, it should come back and, it, and say that it returns negative 1 because that's what the default was in there. It should be 5. Okay, let's make this pass. So I'm going to go back to string length. Okay. Now what do I need to do? I, I, I need to figure out how many characters there are, so I'm going to have to loop through each of the, I have to loop through the whole array until I hit the end of it. I don't know how many times that's going to be ahead of time, so it looks like I'm going to have to use a while loop. So while the character that I'm looking at isn't the end, well, the end is signified by the null character. All right, so while the character that I'm looking at, well, that's going to be part of my string. I can access the characters using string sub i, okay, where i is a counter. Well, that is not equal to the null character, so single quote backslash zero, single quote for the null character. So while that's not true, I just want to keep going and, and go forward. So i plus plus. And I'll have to declare it into i here. To start at the beginning of the string, string I'm going to say i is equal to zero. So what's going to happen? All right, if I had an empty string, i would be zero. And that would fail immediately, and I'd want to return zero, which in that case would be i. If I had something that had you know, a couple characters in it, then it should loop through for those couple times until it hits the null character. And then it should return 2, which would be the, the value of i. So now that I think about it, i is our index, but it's actually also the length of the string. So I'm going to rename this to be count. And then I can just return that as count. Okay. Let's try this. Let's see how it works. So it, it is giving me a length of 5 now. It should be 5. So it looks like I got it. I do want to write a couple more tests to see if I can break it at all. Another good test to write is to have an empty string. So a string with nothing in it. So that's going to be S2. And for an empty string, its length should be 0. So let's, let's say here. I'll write another one, should be 0, and this time we'll pass S2 and the string length of S2. 
and it still does work. So we've hit that condition here. If, if, we, if we were going to exit our, our loop immediately, we've handled that test case. Let's try one more thing. I can't imagine that, that anything else is going to break it, but what if I had S3 and that was hi Bob with a space at the end? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So it should be seven. It's good. I'm just putting some spaces in here. And then we'll try S3 and its string length. And it still works. String length, pretty basic function. So no surprise that, that it did work like this. It's a really good idea to, to write a number of cases, though, because for some of the more complicated functions, you'll find that there are some strings that, that will break your program. And it's good to find those out ahead of time. Until next time, this is Matt. See you later.